Garmin here with Pressure Wash Help to uh, PressureWashHelp.com, and tonight I have a special guest on. I know normally I only have a uh, guest on on the weekends on Sunday, but Jared or Scott had actually uh, messaged me a while ago, and then he um, came on when Eric came on, and he said he would come on live. So I got um, Scott and Jared on here today with me, and he is from the Georgia area. And I just going to say that, but before I get too far here, don't forget if you want any type of training, any type of that kind of stuff, I do have my all online course. Um, I actually got some sun doing a bunch of training today. Um, I did about 10 to 15 videos of basically how to do house washing. Um, it'll take me a little bit to get it edited and then I will be putting it into my course and it will be in there. So Today, I have Scott Jarrett, and he is from Georgia. So, Scott, tell me a little bit about yourself, your family, that kind of stuff, how you got into pressure washing. Yeah, Jason, I appreciate you having me on your channel, man. Uh, my name is Scott Gerard, you guys. I live in Georgia. Uh, I was uh, a chief of police, believe it or not, and uh, I got injured on the job, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to return back to law enforcement. So, I was, I was, I'm a man of faith, so I was praying really hard. Uh, as far as what I should be doing, what kind of business I could be doing, because I've always had that entrepreneur you know, mindset. Uh, I've owned a couple other small businesses, but I, I literally just prayed about it. And I got up one morning, got in the shower and window cleaning came in, you know, into my into my mind. So I started researching it, ended up opening a window cleaning business. And uh, from there, we've grown into a, a full blown cleaning company in seven months. Man, we've got house washing, roof washing. Uh, power washing, surface cleaning, soft soft washing. We're doing every bit of it, man. It's been great. So um, tell me about, um, do you have wife, kids, that kind of thing? I am married and I have seven kids. I oh have six God. girls. And, yeah. I've got six girls and one boy all the way from pre-K all the way to Troy University in Alabama, man. I, wow. I, I, yeah. So you, you've been That's, busy. Well, that's what happens when you wash with Tide, man. You know, you got to <laughs> – you wash laundry together. That's what happens, man. What are you going to do with the coronavirus all this time together? Well, man, it's uh, – I've been fishing a lot. I've been fishing a lot. <laughs> keeps, keeps me sane, bro. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. um, so how long have you been in business? Uh, we started last August. So you started in 2019. Yep. Um, what did you end up doing in 2019, your first year? Uh, back then we were doing mainly just window cleaning and we were still able to turn out around 12 grand, $12,000 you know, for the whole year. Yep. So I hope, um, you, what's your goal for 2020? 2020, since we have started doing this roof washing and, and, and house washing and all these other services, man, it, I'm I'm not going to be happy if we have not made at least a hundred grand this year, Good. even with the Corona and everything, man. I mean, we, we honestly, have, the only thing we've really slowed down doing is, is window cleaning our storefronts I and mean, everything else. Everybody's just, the phone's still been ringing. We haven't been quarantined in Georgia. And as you can see, our governor is just letting everybody open their businesses back up now. So it's, it's a little scary, but you know, at the same time it helps us. So. Yep. John says, awesome. Quality Swan says, great inspiration story. Don't give up the roll with the punches. Um, also, before we get too far along, if you would go down and um, I put it um, in the description, make sure you um, like, um, go subscribe to J um, Scott's channel. Um, that way we can help him out in a way. He's actually doing a lot of videos about his journey doing pressure washing business. And this is a great way to learn sometimes because he is telling his failures. He's telling his successes. Um, and, and that's what makes a channel really good is, is, you know, telling the story. If you can tell a story, that's what it's all about, you know? And, you know, personally, if, if your story is what it is, this is one way that if, and you get successful, you know what, then it's nothing better else. You've got a log for your kids to actually watch it through there and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. that is some things that, you know, definitely go check out his channel down there and that. All right. What has been the best way of marketing and how have you been doing that? Well, I haven't spent any money on marketing. Um, I'm a people person. I've never met a stranger. I can talk to anybody. 
Um, so my biggest thing that I've gotten jobs and more jobs and more jobs off of is I, I will share it like in, on Facebook. I'll, I'll create a post on my company's page and I'll share it in all the local sales, like your, your local, you know, uh, buy here, trade here type, uh, whatever classifieds or whatever yeah. it is for Facebook. And, and I do that in all of the surrounding counties in my area. And I've gotten so many jobs off of that. It's been ridiculous. But the biggest thing that's actually helped my company is I'm not scared to ask one of my customers for a review. So if I, I go, I'm like, look, you know, they're like, oh, man, it looks great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. Well, if you don't mind, if you get time today or tomorrow, whenever, will you please just leave us an, a, a good uh, a recommendation or a review on our Facebook page? And if you get a little more time, if you'll leave us one on our Google uh, Google business, you know, and, and that, that has helped a ton, but you know, we've been in seven, probably seven months and we're over 30 reviews already on our, on our Facebook page and, and people and word of mouth. I cannot explain how good it is, how awesome it is to, to have a good word of mouth about your business. If you go that extra mile to make sure that when you get to the job and you take a picture of what things look like when you get there, and before you leave, put the people's stuff back, roll the water hose up for them, little small things like that. It it, it helps, man. And that's that's my goal. I'm trying to build a brand. I'm trying to build an empire. All right. So, so talking about that, I'm going to go down a little bit of a rabbit trail. You said about Facebook reviews. Are you also trying to get um, Google reviews too? Yes. Okay, good. Because Google reviews are very important also. We can get a lot of traction with Google reviews and making sure everything is set up with that kind of thing. Um, and that, um, Brian Foster's on here and I did get your question. I did ask, I did, um, I did see it. Um, if I may, I'll try to see if I can answer it, um, either, um, in this video at, you know, toward the end, or I will hit you up and, uh, definitely respond back to you. Um, rather I get you on Facebook, even if you want to, Brian, you can hit me up on Facebook messenger too. And I'll, I'll get back to you, dude. Um, all right. So. Um, have we put out any signs or anything like that, or are we just doing Facebook for now? No, when I when I do get to the point that I that I actually feel like it's okay to spend money on uh, advertisement, that'll be the first thing I do. Will be yard signs and strategically place them in in the nicer neighborhoods. You know, I'm not. You know, that's what we were talking about before we got started tonight. I'm not trying to sell my services to anybody for first thing, but I'm. I'm not trying to clean everybody in my county's house or their roof. You know what I mean? I'm trying to appeal to the higher end clients that they, they want all the stuff done, not just the roof wash. They're going to want the driveway done, you know, things like that, because those are the clients that, you know, they have the money to pay for it, but they're also the kind of clients that are going to spread the news for you a little bit later. And they're not going to fuss as much for the most part from what I've seen. So, so talking about yard signs, um, I might've helped one of, um, DJ, we might have put a few signs out today, and I had to kind of teach him how to put signs out. He'd been putting signs out for, um, I don't know, a little while. And he, um, he's like, I just put them here. And I'm like, dude, you got to put these things at every stop sign we come to. I don't yeah. want them at the end of the – I don't want them at the end of the subdivision. That's yeah. only going to get, you know, 200 people. I want them at every stop sign at every major intersection. So – we put them at Kroger's on both entrances of Kroger's. I mean, what other business right now is getting more business than Kroger? The click list um, line was backed up like a half a mile just to get in there. So, you know, yep. these are some spots that we really want to put these signs at. And again, we do want to put these signs in places that like we say that the nicer neighborhoods are coming into. Obviously we're not going to go to the dollar general and put our signs out in front of that because that's probably yeah. not going to be our, our customer at that point. You know, Well, so, I, I have a recommendation and a question at the same time. When I do get to that point to do that, I've seen a lot of people that try to, to, to do the yard signs with their business and they'll put like their logo and then everything that they do. And you have to really kind of squint your eyes to see what all it is. Instead of like me, I'm going to put, Roof washing, house washing. You know what I mean? Just boom in the phone. Yeah. One exactly. service. One service. <laughs> big phone number. And I don't boom. care about the website because you're not really going to see that a lot of times. A lot of times people are going to take a picture. You want one service so we know what we're talking about. And yep. we want um, a big phone number. The big phone number and one service. 
if we put all this stuff and you know everybody thinks that we need all this stuff we can't you're never going to you can't see it i mean and you can't see you know you got to remember that most of these people are driving and you know how many people actually come to a complete stop at a stop sign right you know if they got the little white line around it that means you can actually roll through it you don't actually have to stop right <laughs> talking to the police chief here um but <laughs> but but you know nobody comes to a complete stop now they might come at a complete stop at a four-way red light you know and that kind of thing but this is something that um that does jason know all the wording is backward it isn't backwards it's just backwards on there um so <laughs> so that is something that you have to do is is get that and then another question came through here is where's a good place to get signs? I got them. You can go to pressurewashhelp.com slash get signs and you'll be able to buy a hundred signs, um, one color, um, two sided with the tall stakes, which I like the tall stakes because that gets it. Even if they don't mow the grass, it keeps them up high and you'll be right around 350, 325 to 350 bucks. So you're talking $3 and 50 cents a sign that you can just go out there and guarantee. And I will guarantee you, you will triple your money, if not quadruple it, with just those 100 signs. You'll probably do way more than that, but I will guarantee you, you will at least get your money back times three. So, you know, this is something that is definitely worth it. And then the other thing you gotta remember is we're talking about referrals, right? So if we get that job, and we get do a great job on that. Who's to say we don't, when we do our five rounds, we don't get the neighbor's houses. We don't get um, their friend's houses. You know, so, you know, how much really do we get out of that sign? We don't, we, we really can't say, well, we only got this much out of that sign. Well, maybe we got more than that because maybe we got the customer's house, the next door neighbor's house. We referred us to different people and we was able to get a great job. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to get off my sign kick now. So, <laughs> Roll. All right. Um, so uh, so we talked about the best minute. So tell me what has been a good success story that uh, we've learned through the way in the last, you know, seven, eight months of what of um, starting a pressure washing business. Well, a success story uh, would be just the entire business. We, we've started off with just – you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of window cleaning supplies and tools and a ladder. And, you know, we've grown into, uh, you know, I've got a $12,000 trailer behind me, you know, and, and, and we're getting business. And, you know, I, I don't want to come off as, as arrogant or anything, man, but the money that you can make washing houses and roofs, man, it is, is stupid uh, compared to window cleaning. So success to me, like something that a success story would be just what this business has done so far. And, and what it's going to be this time next year. I hope that we can do it like a one year anniversary on this video, man. And we'll see where we're at then, man. You know, but uh, yeah, that's, that's success story to me is just watching this thing grow. And, and I'm blown away at the response of, of the customers and the people in my area. What has, what have you had to do? Um, mindset has a lot to do with growing a pressure washing business and, and having a mindset, having a positive mindset, having a yeah. mindset that, you know, um, you know, a lot of times we got poor mentality mindsets and that can just, that'll just tear us down basically, you know, well, I can't do that. What have you done to help make us ha have you, ha what, ha what have you done to help, you know, get with that mindset to make sure that you're successful and not a failure? Well, I've, I've had a couple failed businesses and it's because during that time I didn't do any research on how to run a business. So, you know, it's easy to get on here and find how to wash a house or wash a driveway. But I mean, you really need to learn the business side of it. But, you know, like in one of the videos that I have on my channel, if you're not a people person, <laughs> this is going to be a kind of a hard industry for you, because if you if people don't like you, they're not going to use you. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you something else here that is that I've, I've kind of learned here recently. And I think I'm going to start. Eric kind of got me onto it. I think I'm going to do some, start doing some coaching calls. But the reason why I, I'm thinking this is because I've, I've been able to do, get some stuff that I think that has really helped me to know something. So 
a lot of times our so our very first thing we've got to deal with is obviously a website and, and that's going to be the first touch of our customer maybe in your point it's facebook so maybe not but then the next touch is obviously is the phone call and this is probably the most important thing you can do right here is with your phone call when you answer this phone be um be be confident be confident in yourself be confident in what you do be confident in everything and even if you don't know it 100 percent, the best thing you can do is is talk to somebody and walk through your script because the worst thing you want to do is is be like um uh, I, uh, I, uh, that you know that customer knows that you don't know what the crap you're talking about and it I want to I want to touch on that too when you get a second. You know, and it don't matter what you do, but if you're confident, hey, I I need a house wash. All right, our house wash offer is blah 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 blah, and we just keep right on flowing, and we flow that right on through. And so, if I start doing some coaching, this will be one of my steps you're going to have to do with me. You're going to have to tell me I'm going to be your customer, and you're going to have to give me the thing because the last thing you need to do is. Uh, uh, in fact, the best thing you can do is is write down your script, and when you get your script written down, memorize it, where it's just like this no matter what. And then that way, it's an elevator speech. It's and, it, and then I guarantee you that customer will feel confident. That customer won't even go to another call because he feels so confident with you. So this is something that you really have to do. Go ahead. I, I, I want to touch on, on the coaching of, of that, man. That's why I, I highly recommend that you guys find a coach. You know, if it's not Jason, you know, find somebody who is willing to walk you through this. Because one thing that I've learned, I'm, I'm a nice guy. I don't like, you know, if someone says, hey, you know, I give them a quote. And they're like, oh, man, you know, well, can you do it for, you know, so and so? I want to be like, yeah, you know, I sure can. I want to help you out. But then, you know, my coach, Eric Bland, you had him on your on your channel the other day, man. He's, he just put it in a mind, in, in, in a perspective for me. He's like, do you know what they're doing when they're doing that? I'm like, trying to get a good deal. He said, no, they're telling you how much your business should make. Right. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know. So, and, you know, with, with, with a coach, uh, you know, with your coaching calls and stuff, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge help, man. But, like, uh, I quoted, like, a, a $1,700 house cleaning job the other day, right? And the guy said, well, I, I want to get one more quote and uh, and I'll get back with you. I said, OK, didn't hear any back, anything back. So the next day I sent him a message. Hey, man, just touching base. Make sure you somebody took care of you. Well, the other guy told me he could do it for 900 bucks. So I'm like, oh, God. And I panicked. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I? Because I really want to get that job, you know, because I mean? it wasn't that bad. Right. Um, and I called Eric. I, I, he said, dude, do, walk, do this right here. Call him back and say, look, sir. I understand, you know, you may have gotten another quote or another estimate. He said, you know, but honestly, I've been trying to figure out any way that I can help you out. But for that price right there, I would be really concerned with quality and them having insurance. So if, you know, we might could come down, you know, you never want to go down to that. Right. Because there may not even be that other quote. You know what I mean? Right. You never want to go down to that 900. So if you're at 1600, I maybe go down to like 12 or 13. But that's it. You know what I mean? And some people won't even do that, but you never want to go down unless he can, you know, if he can show you like an official quote, I still wouldn't go down there. And here's the thing, and, and, what, I've and, learned, what I've learned more from those types of customers in the end, we don't want them. In the end, those yeah. types of customers will drive you nuts because they don't yep. know they can drive your price down. And so now they're going to nitpick you to death and then they're going to add all this other thing. And it's just yep. like, wait, I was in the car industry for 10 years as a general manager sell yourself the product sells itself you know and that is true we're selling you know in the end of the day are we really selling pressure washing are we really selling window clean are we real no we're not selling it we're, we're selling providing a service customer service you know that's it chick-fil-a are they really selling chicken there's 10 <laughs> other chicken joints around that's no, good that's good chicken bro that's they good have chicken. the best chicken around <laughs> you, they don't have the best chicken around they have the best customer service of any place you will ever go yep. that, by far. So, all right. Um, 
All right. So we talked about a good success story. Tell me about a bad story or something that happened that you were like, well, that stinks. All right. That would be uh, a, a solar field. We, uh, we, uh, I got excited. I actually had called and asked a, a, a business about renting a big uh, uh, 60 foot boom lift. And the guy went to ask me questions about my cleaning business. And I said, well, yeah, you know, we do this, this. And he's like, well, do you clean solar panels? I'm like, yeah, we sure can. We sure can. And he's like, well, cool. I'll get in touch with you. I'll have my guy get in touch with you. So I went home and researched how to clean solar panels. We got the stuff to do it with. This guy calls me and uh, he's like, you know, we've got 17 sites and there there are 3000 panels on each site. Can you clean them? I'm like, absolutely. You know, and I had already done my research. Uh, you know, just like you just said, you want to sound professional on the phone. You don't want to be like, well, you know, but anyway, so I already had my research done. I told him, you know, an X amount per panel and he almost dropped a goose on the phone. He's like, well, let me, let me, let me check on some things and I'll call you back. It took about a week or two and he called me back. He said, we're willing to pay you $1 per panel. So the, again, already he's telling me how much my company should make, but that's a $3,000 job, you know, when I'm first starting out. So I'm drooling at the mouth, you know. <laughs> And we got the job. So we went down. I'm thinking it's going to take three, three and a half days. I had a water, I bought a water fed pole and everything. And, and we got out there and it was a disaster, dude. I mean, something that was supposed to take three, three and a half days took seven days. And it was just a nightmare. We ended up having to take power washers to it, which I didn't want to do. But, you know, that was the only way to get this stuff off because it, it was right beside like a paper mill. And this stuff was just just caked on there for years, man. So we ended up losing money. And when I got excited because I saw, you know, three grand. I thought I got excited and we got our butts handed to us, man. So that, that, that's been a learning, learning lesson right there, man. The learning lesson. I, I still remember that is probably, the, if, I mean, it's not the biggest failure I ever had, but it was a, it was a big fail. Um, we did a big concrete stamp, concrete, um, cleaning and sealing job and we put the wrong sealer on. And when it would have been fine if it was just on a patio, well, it happened to be on a driveway and when these cars parked in the driveway, when they came home, it looked great when we got done. Um, but when we were done, the next day they pulled out and you could see right where the, all the tire tracks was. And I was like, that's oh, not good. So we ended up having to strip the whole thing. And then we had to end up, um, so that took a two day process because you have to, we tried every, first we tried xylene and all that stuff to blend it. That didn't work. Then we went to soy gel and soy gel. If you never put it on sucks, you got to put it down and then you got to um, put sheets on it and let it sit overnight. And uh, then you come back in the morning and use hot water to get this stuff off. So this was a complete disaster. And originally we, it was like a $900 job. Originally it took us like two hours. You know, we were like, man, we made, I made some great money. Uh, but by the time I was done with that job, and I had to put all my money. I had almost nine hundred and fifty dollars just in chemical and stuff to get it off there. And when you, <laughs> that's not counting the four days of working on this stupid driveway. So you know, you have you win some, you lose some, and you hope you don't lose your tail in the the, the end of it. So you're going to get your butt handed to you, especially if you're just starting out. You're going to get your butt kicked. Don't give up. Keep going. It all goes into like you were saying with a mindset, man. I'm I, I'm like Conor McGregor. I'm not here to take part. I'm here to take over. And I want you know I want to be the go-to you know cleaning business in my area. And and that's I'm not going to accept anything less. But you're going to get your butt kicked, guys. If everybody that's watching, you're going to get you're going to run into it. I'm sure somebody's commenting right now. Oh, my job. It it was this 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 and that. You know you got to keep going, man. That's how you learn. Yep, that's how you learn. Um, that's exactly right. All right. So we talked about that. So, um, what's been a, a good learning curve? What has been a learning curve in the last seven months? What is something that you thought was one way and you ended up maybe having to change your thinking on about it and that kind of thing? Honestly, uh, like, uh, uh, we're getting into, we did the surface cleaning. I got a real big surface cleaner and, uh, down here in, in South Georgia, I mean, the concrete is weird. I mean, you can clean it. And it looks better than it did, but it'll still have like a grayish tint to it in certain areas, especially like where everywhere they put a trowel, especially on the sides. And it just so happens that that trowel is the same diameter as your surface cleaner. So it kind of looks like you did it. 
So it's like, ah, so, you know, I've, I've taken the time and done some research and, you know, I've talked with you about it and, you know, I've bought some products that, you know, will, will help that. But, you know, it, that, that's a little intimidating, man, because especially I have OCD. So I'm like, I wanted to get it like, I want it to look like fresh concrete, but I'm, I'm slowly realizing, well, I'm quickly realizing that not all concrete is the same. You can have five driveways in a road done by the same person and they're all going to look completely different when they're clean. And, you know, <laughs> I'm open to advice, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on that. I want to know how good is good, you know, and that's, that, that's, that's the thing I'm working on. That's a learning curve for me. Right? And this is a, so talking about that, this is a little bit different. Kenneth Rickner Rick, Rick, um, wrote a few days ago, I quoted a job for $730. My, my competitor quoted $500. The customer chose me and gave me a hundred seventy dollar tip because I sold myself. He cut me a check for nine hundred dollars. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Um, you know, and sometimes people know what quality it is. Sometimes people know rather what that cheap person is. You know, and if they, ha you know, and if they don't have insurance and all that kind of stuff. You know, that is kind of the the purpose of not cutting your, not worrying about what your competitor is. You know, sell yourself, sell your service, sell everything that you do, and that will sell itself in the end. Um, yep. You know, and we don't need to, you know, I, I'll be quite honest. I hate selling. I, I hate selling. Scott has watched my videos, a bunch of my videos, and he didn't even know. He was like, you got a training? Yeah, I have a full course training that I have on the back side of my membership. And, you know, I don't, I'm not pushy. I'm not like, sell my stuff. Now, do I sell some of it? Yes, I do. But I don't push it, you know, because I don't, that's not Jason. And even when I, when I wasn't, I did have my business. That's why I use response to bid because response to bid sells itself. It sells packages and packages is how you make money. And yeah. so packages, you know, I will say it until I'm blue in the face. You have to sell packages. Packages are very important because yeah. it, they will upsell themselves. And that's how I deal with people that want to be cheap or want to be, all right, then we can take this package off and now we're in your price range, you know? And so yeah. that way it's adding value to that price range. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want to touch on that too, Jason, man. If you go to a, a, a watch store and there's two identical watches, and one of them is $99 and one of them is $999. Which one are you going to want? The $999. You're going to want the $999 because it says it's worth it. It says it's quality. Right. So I'll, I'll, everybody who's watching this, please understand, you know, you know, you got those $99 guys out there that'll come and wash your house for 60 or 70 bucks, you know, vinyl siding or something. Good luck. You know what I mean? When they've killed all your vegetation and things like that. And you, you've just got to, you, you, you can fake it till you make it to a certain extent, but you better be able to back it up when it, when it comes time to turn the key and start work that day. You know what I mean? You better know how to do it. And if you don't, you know, don't just, I mean, pick up the phone and call, but you realize what kind of job you can do and know your limitations. And don't, I mean, McDonald's doesn't worry about how much Burger King is selling their stuff for. You know what I mean? Know what you need to charge and then know what you want to charge. And, and don't accept anything less. I mean, it, it's value. You right. know, we, we pick up a lot of customers. You know, it, the guy that was doing windows before me, he did it here for 40 years and he was doing storefronts for eight bucks. <laughs> and he sent me all of his clientele and they're like, well, we used to pay him eight. I'm like, yeah, I'm at 25. Right. And right. they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, but when we do that, we're going to do this, this. And they're like, oh, okay. As soon as we do the job, I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. Okay, cool. You know, all right. This you know, is. This is a great question. This is a super chat from Benjamin. Um, best learning experience. Um, did a gray siding house. Already had been high pressure before we did it. Unbeknownst to me, we washed it and ended up to go back and do a free oxidation removal. Um, so this is, I actually did a video that I, I kind of did a lot of stressing on. Uh, this is a great thing to make sure we're doing our before and after pictures. 
Um, obviously, if the the siding was blown off underneath and you couldn't, you know, and it had molded over, and you couldn't see it. Then obviously, that's just something you do. But your before and after pictures is what will keep you from doing free stuff or buying stuff or buying that grill that was broken before you started or buying that vinyl siding that had holes in it because the neighbor's kid had BB holes in it. Um, the yeah. vinyl siding house today that I did, it had, it had nicks and dings all in it. And that's where, you know, that before picture, we really want to make before pictures. And if it's really bad, we really want to go get the customer and say, listen, Mr. Customer, this is already done before we were here. And we just want to make sure that you see that it's noted that we, that way, you know, I don't, I won't have to, you're not going to try to get me on something that I didn't do. So oh, yeah. always take your before pictures and that kind of thing. Um, all right. So I'm just reading through some questions here. All right. So what is some thing, what is something that I can help you with that you might be struggling with or something that I can do to help you get to your hundred thousand dollars? Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to, we, we, you know, we were speaking uh, before we, we launched this video tonight, you know, learning in the proper way to downstream and how to figure out your ratios and how to do your mixes if you're going to downstream, because I've got a 20 to 1 downstream, you know, you were telling me, you know, go with like a 10 to 1, things like that, you know, you, you can always learn something new. Every single day when I get home, if I have nothing to do, once I get caught up on QuickBooks and all that, I sit down and I watch videos like you've got, you know, and some of the other, you know, the YouTubers we watched, I mean, they're they're helpful. I mean, that's one thing I love about this industry is people are so willing to help, you know, and you never stop learning. You know, if you know, if you've got concrete cleaning down, keep looking at it. You may find a different way that makes you go faster. It's another tool for the toolbox. You're never going to know it all. Just keep, just keep learning. Um, and, and that's one thing that I, that I'm interested in is the downstream because I think it'll cut down a lot of time. Uh, since I've got this, such a small software system right now. And that might've went under a failure story. Um, he tried to downstream before and uh, he said that his wife didn't really like him after he got done washing the house. Um, and Just kill it all. Kill it all. <laughs> and, and, and what he was really going for is so that way he didn't have to weed eat during the summer because he killed everything. So. <laughs> 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 and so um he said he killed everything but you know that is a learning curve and you know i have killed some stuff before i'm not going to say i haven't um you know it is just something that is part of it and you learn and you go on and you you hopefully it wasn't too expensive on you in your learning process um, <laughs> and, and a lot of times that's why you know you can either learn by painting it up front and taking class and that kind of stuff or you learn it in the school of hard knocks because that in in my class that i teach whether you come in person or you um, do it um, online is the school of hard knocks of jason i've i've been in this for since you know 2011 and I have done the stupid stuff and I know what stupid stuff is and I know how to stay away from the stupid stuff, you know, um, making sure that your tips are in line. So you're not buying a window, making sure your tips are in line. So you don't lose your J rod tip. So these are some things that, you know, I learned and that's how I teach in of school of hard knocks. So <laughs> you're not supposed to point your tips at windows. <laughs> Not when you first. I've lost one already, dude. I've lost one already. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they'll go flying out like a freaking shotgun, dude. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Gutter Guy here, the Compassion Capitalist. Um, I came across a composite deck today. The sun had already completely baked the color layer. I couldn't wash with pressure and bleach could only do so much. I told the client his deck was done. How old was the deck? Is this a really old deck or is this not so old of a deck? Um, the Compassion Capitalist. Um, that would be my question. Because if it's an older deck, you're not going to get the color out of them. I mean, it's done. Um, it says you can downstream like 50-50. I don't know what that question was. Oh, I know what it is. Um, Jason, here's a question for you both. What's the biggest problem you've had happen on a job? You want me to answer first? Yeah, you can go first. 
biggest problem I've had so far, not being able to find respirators so I can keep working. <laughs> you can't find them anywhere. I'm, I'm like, I'm running out right now. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> uh, now, the biggest problem I've had on a job so far would probably be my own house. I came home, and my house is the guinea pig, uh, the downstream. Um, before I went and actually to a paying customer and started doing uh, a roof wash or a house wash, I made sure I had a basic guidelines on what I should do so I don't kill everything. Um, and the only problem I really had, we almost died. I mean, we, we almost caused ourselves some serious problems. Um, as you can see on my trailer right here, I've got a 55 gallon drum. That's my SH tank. When I, I went and got, and got it and I didn't do my research. So when I went down to my supplier and got it, I loaded up on the back of my trailer and I went to do a roof. So I was just pumping it straight out of here, straight out, straight from the company. And so I'm supposed to be at a 5% mix, not knowing that this 10 and a half is probably about a 14, 14 and a half mix because it's fresh. And this stuff started smoking, dude. I mean, it was literally, when I was putting it in my mix tank, it was pure steam coming out of it. I'm like, and, the, and, my, and my godson that works for him, he's like, is that supposed to be doing that? I'm like, probably not. Make sure you got your respirator on. We finished the job and we didn't kill any plants, but we, there's no telling how hot that was. And it could have been disastrous for the for the for the roof for the stuff around it, and it's just because I didn't know. I didn't know that when you pick this up, you're thinking you're going to cut it in half, you know, and get a 5.25 mix. And you, <laughs> it was hot, bro. It was hot. I mean, time you sprayed it on the roof, it was like. Shh. I mean, it, it was. It, it looked like a fog hat concert. Well, and that's it even the thing too, especially where you all are so hot. It happens here too when it gets in the summertime. Of you know. That's one reason why we really need to wear respirators up on these roofs. You know, these roofs are so hot. And as soon as that stuff hits, it's going to off gas. Um, you know, it's going to off gas just because it's going into, I mean, we're, we're putting it on as a liquid and it, it's so hot. It's actually putting it into a gas at that point. And so we really yeah. got to be careful up there. So, you know, you know, house washing, we probably should wear a respirator. Roof cleaning, we need to wear a respirator. Um, this stuff kills everything, you know, and it can get in your lungs and, that, and it can do a lot of damage to you. It can really mess you up. I mean, I know some people that have been doing this for a long time and, you know, they, they're messed up inside because they breath, they breathed all this crap. And, you know, it is something that will, it will kill you. You know, it is some nasty stuff and that is, you know, especially when it's in that hot temperature, it's changing, it's changing, you know, state of matter and all that kind of stuff. And it can be very dangerous. And so, you know, if we're up on roofs, we really need to make sure that we are, um, there so and don't leave your sh tank on the back of your trailer in the middle of the sunshine <laughs> yeah that's another thing <laughs> bomb waiting to happen all right gregory y'all are god's best best pump um cat or general i like the general better and then um starting out or for starting out say four gallon machine direct driver belt i would probably go with a belt driven at the end of it, um, that kind of stuff. Um, the words of wisdom, you and Eric Sunday definitely motivated us this week. A lot of work doing door hangers. I'm exhausted, but I've booked and closed 2,000 jobs since Sunday. That's awesome, Central Firefighter um, or Central Illinois Power Washing. So you had asked the question, what should I probably do? You know, would I, would you rather my training or would you rather, um, 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 a website? I'm going to go with, if you don't know what you're doing with pressure washing, I'm going to probably give you, you, you know, and I would do an in-person training, a one day in-person training with you for even the, the price that I have right now. Um, if you can get here in one day and then head back or whatnot. Um, and you know, as long as I can help you out and get you going and, you know, I go over a lot of the marketing stuff. I go over, um, things that you need to do in marketing and the very basic stuff. Um, I have all of it in my course, but I go even a little bit deeper in the in-person side of stuff. Um, normally I don't do one-on-one -on -one trainings for that price, um, just because, I do give a lot more information. Um, I am actually um, looking at, I, I know I haven't responded back to you yet. Um, he is a central, he's a firefighter in central Illinois. 
and uh, they're looking at maybe laying off. And he has a family, I believe, of three or four with one on the way. So, um, but this is a great thing that you can go out there and make money. Obviously, if you went out there and you booked two grand since Sunday, that's what it's all about at the end of the day, going out there and getting it done. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, um, this is a job that you can't, we was just talking about making a hundred grand a year or more, you know, we can, it's, it, it's really, you can make more than that. Um, it's all in, you know, how much go you got and how much, um, quit you got. Cause if you quit, it, it, you're not going to make nothing. And if you think that it's just going to fall off the tree and come in, it's not going to, you know, when I had my business, I worked all the, all the way to the end of making sure even after I quit, I still did marketing for them because it, it is something that takes, you know, you got to push and you got to keep going, you know, and you got to keep investing in the business. Now I understand that you got a family and you got to raise it, but you know, it's kind of like Dave Ramsey says, you know, um, we're going to live like nobody today so we can live like nobody um, tomorrow. So, or down the road. And so that is some things that, you know, you will have to buckle down. And this is some things that you will definitely, definitely um, go out there and do it. Um, compassion training, do training. Um, knowing how to do the work will get you more work. Um, did a $1,200 job last week and she referred me her son for another $1,000 that would pay for a website. And you're exactly right on mm -hmm. compassion, you know, and that's the thing. If you know how to do the work and you know how to do it efficiently and you know how to get it done right, um, you can be a lot quicker, you know. Obviously, Scott's just kind of, he's just kind of getting into the pressure washing, you know. He's not even really downstreaming. He's not, you know, soft washing much, you know. And so once you go and learn how to do that kind of stuff, then it's easy and it's cake and it's, I mean, I did a house wash today and I was teaching the whole time. I mean, I'm, I'm breaking down everything to the, I mean, I, I think I have, like I said, I have about 10 videos and, and probably five of them was just on the house washing. And it took me 45 minutes to wash a two story house, about a 2000 square foot house and me teaching how to do it. Now, I'm using a 10 gallon a minute machine, but in the end, I'm still doing the house wash and it was nasty dirty. And it took me, you know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes. So if I wasn't doing it, you know, I could have even been done a lot quicker. I only used 150 gallons. I actually got a flow meter because I wanted to see how many gallons of water it would take to clean a house. I only used 150 gallons to clean the whole house. So, you know, it's all about technique and it's all about having the right equipment. If you have the right equipment and you have the right technique, I mean, it, you'll, you will be surprised. You know, I did one whole video that's about 10 to 15 minutes long. That's all about hose management. Why do I do that about hose management? Because that's what's the most important thing. You know, most people think I got to spray this chemical up there. That's not it. It's about how do we drag this hose the least amount of time, how many without walking back and forth to the truck 20 times, and we only do it four times. It's all about hose management. It's all about technique. And that's what you learn by either coming into my in-person class, or that's what you learn into my training is, is how to clean the house properly and how to go from step by step by step and to make it just flow and go real easy. Um, and that is how you get that $300 an hour. I mean, have you ever made $300 an hour before? Well, if you haven't, this is how you do it, you know, and don't be cheap. Don't discount. I know we kind of talked a little bit about it, but don't discount your services, you know, go out there and, and give a price. And here's the deal. Well, what if I don't get that job? Well, guess what? Go get another bid. You know, if, if you're closing a hundred percent, you're too cheap. That's 100%. You know, um, that's what I was telling DJ earlier today. You know, um, the business I own was anywhere. We were anywhere from 45 to 50%. So what did that mean? That meant that I had to go out there and get lots of leads because I'm only getting 50% of the leads that I'm closing. So that means I got to go get more leads so I can go get more jobs. Go get more leads, go get more jobs and be fast at it, but be efficient and knock that stuff out, you know, and that's what you want to do, really do. So 
Jason, did you downstream the house today? I did downstream the house today. Yep. Um, I am going to do a video on how to use a soft wash system to clean a house, but I wanted to do each individual video. So that way, if somebody wants to downstream or somebody wants to do that, and I may even do a house from Vex yet, and that's not my favorite, but I will show how it's done. So, um, all right. So Scott, tell me, um, so you, uh, tell me again about your family. How, what do they think about you doing all this stuff? Well, my, my wife, I mean, she stands behind me on everything. I've got an amazing, amazing wife. Um, you know, the first couple months we were open, I mean, there was weeks when we were making, you know, 150, 200 bucks. And then there were weeks when we were knocking down two or 3,000. And, <laughs> you know, when your wife sees you bring home $3,000 in a week, it's like, Hey, what can we, what, Oh, that, that'll pay this, this, and this, and this. I'm like, yeah, that'll buy a water fed pole. That'll buy this, that'll buy that. And, you know, I, I keep investing money, you know, we take out enough to pay bills and stuff like that, but we, we put money back. For the business and so when we do have to replace something or when we want to you know upgrade and buy something else we can you know but uh, you know with her you know it, it's hard you know you got to have that discipline um my kids uh my godson he works for me he loves it i'm showing him the craft um and my little ones you know i, I that's one thing you know i was in law enforcement for many years and you know you go and you work hours and hours and hours and hours, you know what I mean? And different shifts and things like that. Your kids might not even see you that day. The most beautiful thing that I love about what we do is I can go, if I want to be done by two o'clock in the afternoon, I can schedule it that way. If I need to don't or if I don't want to start till 11 o'clock in the morning, I can schedule it that way. You know what I mean? But most of the time we go out there. So I get back in time to spend time with my kids and it's, it's you know, and so that so they're loving that. That's that's probably one of the most rewarding things about owning your own business, doing this kind of work, you know, to the firefighter or whatever we were talking about just a minute ago. He's panicking. He doesn't know what to do. Do it. Open the dang business. Go to work. That two thousand dollars you make or whatever like that, man, you know, keep rolling, dude, because it's out there. I mean, the money is out there. I mean, it really it really is, man. But my family stands behind me a hundred thousand percent. And that's a good point. And this is what I want to pull out of that point right there, what you just said of uh, about owning your own business. Um, it is about your time. You know, it is about the time. Now, in the beginning of your business, obviously, you got to put a lot of time in your business, you know, and you got to go out there and do those hard hours. But in the, but on, on the other hand, like you were saying, you know, if you got something at two o'clock, hey, I can schedule around it. Maybe I work later. Maybe mm -hmm. I work earlier and I can schedule yep. around that time and have that family time, you know, um, and that is important. And, and, and honestly, you know, there is people that might disagree with me, but, you know, family time is very, very important. Um, you know, the being around your kids, being with your kids, not just being that dude that just comes in the middle of the night and comes home with mom, you know, um, that is very important that we, um, spend that time with our kids and, you know, but by owning our own business, that is how we can have, um, that time, you know, punching that time clock, trading time for hours or time for money, you know, are you really ever going to get ahead? I mean, very rarely, even as a police chief, in Georgia, you probably didn't make what you could be making right now as a uh, as a pressure washer. I make what what I used to make in a week, dude. I'm making a day right now. You know, and so so that is some things that you can look at. That you know, that is some things that you know of owning your own business. Now, is there headaches <laughs> owning your own business? Absolutely, I wouldn't tell you. You know, <laughs> this is the life of an entrepreneur. You have high days, you have low days. You know especially when you get employees and they tear up stuff and you're in your, you know, you think that, you know, you got to get payroll and you're owed $20,000, you know, and, and it's out in account, you know, and you're ready to pull your hair out. But then on other days, it's like the best thing ever. So, you know, it isn't for everybody, but it is something that you can actually obtain and, and make it happen. All right. Well, we got 60 people on here again, this go down in the description and Scott's got his channel and he's kind of doing the journey of his whole starting his business. Um, he, he bought a little, um, a little 
um, soft wash system from Northern Tool. He talks about it. And so he's just kind of giving you the ups and downs. And, and honestly, talking about the YouTube side of things with you, Scott, um, that is a great thing to do. Um, he's right at 300 um, subscribers. Um, so let's see if we can get him up to 500 subscribers. Um, so go down there and definitely, definitely check him out and uh, give him a like and a subscribe and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm thinking about signing up with responsive bid and coupling it with customer factor, but I'm running mainly so low. Do you think the, this is a $300 a month well spent or is it overkill? I don't think it's $300 a month. Um, responsive bid, I believe is not quite that high. Um, so, um, responsive bid, especially if you're solo, it is definitely worth it. Um, um, the thing of that about response a bit is, is the follow up. You have to follow up. If you don't follow up, you fold up as uh, Ray would say, um, you got to follow up. Follow up is very important. You would be surprised how much you're losing by not following up. If you do not follow up, um, you're just letting money burn it right out of your pocket, basically. Um, so we definitely want to follow up with our customers and, and everything like that. Um, I just got my equipment. I'm ready to go to work, but man, it's been difficult getting to work. This is one of the things that I always tell people. I can teach anybody how to pressure wash. I can, I mean, I've done it many times. Um, I, I had several employees. I probably had 30 employees come in and go through, um, pressure wash Cincinnati. Um, and every one of them, I taught how to pressure wash. Most of them are 18, 19, 21 year olds, 25 year olds. I could teach anybody of them. I mean, I could have you out on the truck in about two weeks and you would be ready to rock and roll and do your job. And yeah, am I going to have issues? Yeah, but you would get the gist of it pretty quick. But on the other hand, <clears throat> getting work is very difficult. Um, it's just not something that's just going to be like poofy and Here's, here's all this work. Um, so what I would tell you on that is, is go out there and um, do marketing. You know, you're going to have to, if you don't have no money, obviously you're going to do like Scott. You're going to go out there on the Facebook groups and you're going to live in there. Um, yes. You're going to post in every um, trade mom pop. You're going to post on every, um, every neighborhood group and everything like that. If you live in a decent neighborhood, you can do the same thing with, um, you can do this exact same thing with um, next door. Next door is just like Facebook, but just a little bit different. But it's the same thing as Facebook groups. If you got that done, then, and you're looking for more, then you're going to go for Google My Business. You're going to go out there and fill it out, make sure everything's filled out right. You're going to go put a hundred pictures in there on Google, my business. And in that you're going to name those pictures and you're going to um, name the files and upload those files. Um, and then the next job you got is, is to go get some um, reviews. You know, we need to get those five star reviews and, and get all that kind of stuff done in that there. Um, if you got some money and you don't got a lot of money, then I'm going to tell you to probably go with signs. Yard signs do great. You know, I would, my challenge to you would be 25 a week, a hundred or a hundred signs a month. That's $350 a month. I guarantee you, you will, you will triple quadruple your money. With no problem with yard signs. Yard signs is a great thing. And if you want to move up to the next big boy level, then obviously you're either going to put some money in the Facebook um, or you're going to do Google ads. Or if you really want to put a lot of money out, you're going to probably go and try to do some SEO work in a website and get stuff like that. And talking about the firefighter was talking about a website. Just because you build a website don't mean people are going to come. And it don't mean that people are going to find you. Um, unless you do SEO, which is search engine optimization, and you're going to spend anywhere from about $2,000 to $5,000 to $10,000, or you're going to spend a lot of time, and it takes time to get um, built up anyway, um, before that website's ever going to get found and that kind of thing anyway. So when people Can say... I on that too? Yep, go ahead. Uh, from a, just, just from ground level, like, you know, where I'm at right now, the things that has helped me the most, you know, starting out, I don't have any business. 
I made sure when I started that my vehicle was properly labeled in a, in a professional manner. It says exactly what we do. Uh, we went, we went to uh, finprint.com. We got those nice jerseys. Uh, they, they got both. I mean, this just fantastic shirts and, and I wear that shirt everywhere I go. I don't care if it's Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Sunday, everywhere I go, I've got my company shirt on. If I'm going out to eat with my wife, I've got my company shirt on. If I'm, and I drive my company vehicle everywhere. If I've got to go to town and get groceries, I drive my company vehicle and I cannot tell you how many jobs we have gotten just from the shirt or just by parking our, well, I have a minivan, parking my minivan to get gas. And someone at the next pump over is like, oh, so y'all do that? That Yes, sir, we sure do. And I don't have business cards. I started off with business cards. I went away from business cards and I invested a little bit more money and I bought the business magnets from Vistaprint. It's because it, it, my thinking on that is people lose business cards. They'll pick their teeth with them or whatever else they, it is that they do with them. But a magnet, a little card sized magnet, they're going to take it and they're going to stick it right on the refrigerator with their kids and grandkids. And the next time they go in there to get a drink or something, there's going to be a day when they come by and they're going to see my card or my number, my services on there. And they're going to call that. It's going to be a constant reminder. So if you're ground level like I was seven months ago and you have no business, uh, think about those things and don't be afraid to go knock on a door. It depends on what kind of business you're doing. If you're doing window cleaning, go to these storefronts because every one of those storefront owners owns a house or rents a house. They've got relatives and all that, and you can get window cleaning business that way. But house washing is the same way. Everybody you deal with has a brother, sister, cousin, uncle, dad, somebody in your business. You'll be surprised how fast it will grow if you'll just get out there and, and talk to people and represent yourself as a professional company. Yep, I agree 100%. And um, Greg Townsend, I'm asking where is a good place to get signs. Go to pressurewashhelp.com slash get signs. Um, there you'll take, you'll be to, uh, UZ marketing and, uh, you'll buy me a cup of coffee when you go to that link. Um, it won't cost you no extra and you can get signs for right around $3 and 50 cents a piece per, if you get a hundred of them, you'll be right at probably around $350. And so that is, um, something that you can definitely look at doing. Um, and again, like you're saying, you know, I know uh, Mr. Bobby Walker, when he started out, he did a lot of door to door and, and that kind of thing, you know, and I'm not a door to door person, but I'm not going to say it don't work for you, you know, and when we're doing this door to door stuff or whenever we're doing whatever we're doing, make sure we're, we're not just handing out 5,000 cards and saying, well, that didn't work. You know, we got to hand out lots of cards and see, you know, maybe different designs might, you know, it's not going to happen. You can go buy 5,000 cards and pass them all out and you might not get a call, but you might not have had the right call to action on that card, or you might not have had the right thing on what you needed on that card on there. So, you know, you got to try it over and over. You know, um, I, I do different things, you know, I like AdWords and that's how I was able to scale my business. Now, you know, I mean, some guys it works really well. Some guys don't, you know, and it just depends, you know, I got one guy right now. I mean, I know he got seven leads in the last two days, you know, just off the AdWords he ran, you know. So, you know, it is one of those things, and it takes money to make money. You know, you got to get out of that mindset of, well, I don't want to spend no money, and I don't want to, you know, and I'm not going to anything after Scott. I'm just saying you got to get out of that mindset that I can't spend money in marketing. Um, if you're brand new in business, you know, you kind of got to, you know, if, if, if I knew I was going to do a hundred, if my goal was a hundred thousand dollars, my first year, my, my marketing budget would be at least 10 to 15%. It'd be 10 to $15,000. And that's how you're going to get to that hundred to $150,000. So I got over 2000 new clients last year doing exactly what Jason said. That's amazing. You listen to Jason, and I know he does. You know how I know he does? Because he did a boatload in Christmas lights. And, you know, and and he just did it. What You know, and but he does do some great things with mark or um, gutter cleaning. But 2,000 new clients last year doing exactly what Jason said. Hi, guys. Didn't even know Jason was on. Notification wasn't working. Oh, sorry. Um, great live, Scott. Great live session, Jason and Scott. Thanks for sharing. Wish you the best, sir. So that was from Michael. Appreciate it. Um, 
Does the course teach you how to work with the equipment you have? Generally, 4,000 PSI, 4,000 direct cold water in Florida. Trying to open my side gig on a four by a five by eight trailer. I do go over two trailer builds that I built. I built the one in Dayton that it goes over that trailer build, and then the trailer build that I just sold. Um, I went pretty in depth, and it goes over that trailer build also. So it does go over two trailer builds and how to do everything. Um, I broke it down to pretty much step by step on this last trailer build. Um, I didn't, I mean, I broke it down to really, 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 really break it down. Um, I'm not going to use the normal term that I would say, but I broke it down really far so that anybody can figure it out and anybody can see it. Um, so any questions, Scott, for Jason, before we get, I'm not going to keep you on here much longer. We've been on here for an hour or so. No, man, I've been, I've enjoyed it, dude. I'll, I'll touch base with you on Facebook. If I have any more specific questions, man, I just, you know, as a, as a, as a fan of your, of your channel and, and the information that you have, man, I, I just want to encourage you to keep going and uh, keep taking the time for people like us that are on the ground level. We don't have the years of experience like you guys do. And uh, you got a lot of eyes watching you, man. We depend on you guys making your videos because it helps us. Ton. So just keep doing what you're doing. Everybody else that's been watching. We appreciate it. So don't hang on here before we get off. Cause I want to talk to you when we get off there, but um, talking about eyes on there, I'm pretty proud. I'm, I know I'm not, no, uh, I haven't blown up like some other people have, but I have hit um, 150,000 views in the last 28 days. So that is pretty, yeah. um, pretty significant to me that when you really think about that, when I really think about that, and even, you know, when you really think about the, the lower end, you know, um, even here tonight, I mean, we got 58, 60 people in here, you know, just think of a room with 60 people in here that we're actually talking to Scott, what's your Facebook page? Uh, I don't have a Facebook page. I, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's the same as my YouTube channel as Scott cleans it. Okay. Uh, the YouTube channel is the same thing on Instagram. Uh, okay. So go check them out. Definitely get on um, his Instagram and like it too. And uh, definitely check out his channel. Like I say, I have it down there. But again, you know, like I was saying, we got 60 people in here right now that has watched this. And even when you put those videos out, just think about this. Every time somebody watches your video, that's a view. And it, and it has to be a 30-second view. So even if you only got 25 views or 100 views, that you are speaking into 100 people's lives. And I know you're a man of faith. And just think about that. You know, we can sow seeds out there that, you know, we can do that kind of stuff. So, you know, we it is one of those things that, yes, you might only, you know, I, I mean, like I say, I got 150, I'm like at 149,000 views in the last 28 days. I have yeah. over 500,000 watch minutes of Jason. And so, you know, when you really think about that, um, you know, think about that. We can't expect that Wade. Um, he hasn't hit a thousand. Um, he has not hit a thousand subscribers yet, so he hasn't given it away. So talking about that, if you were looking for a free giveaway for a, uh, a pressure wash or a soft wash kit from Arkansas, um, soft wash kit make sure you go to pressurewashhelp.com slash giveaway and when you get in there you will subscribe to his channel when he gets to a thousand subscribers he's going to give that um, soft wash thing away so um, do that for sure um, nav put love watching your guys's videos i learn a lot um, so you know just remember that you know on the youtube side of things is this is something that you know we are affecting people's lives and people will do that so you know when you're talking into people's lives don't be afraid to talk and you know and tell stories and, and talk into those people's lives you never know you know you never know where people are standing or struggling or you know that's what i look at this as you know i love to help people um i help people whether i'm a fireman and i love people helping people here um, my goal is to help people and it's like i told scott earlier you know I give out all my information. Um, pretty much every bit of my information is given out. In my course, I detail it out. And you can go one, one, one right here. But if you go through my channel, you know, and somebody has a problem, I give out all my information. 
Now, I don't go so far right now of, you know, answering questions on the phone and stuff like that, just because um, I would never get anything done. So um, that is why I do pressurewashhelp.com slash ask Jason or ask. Um, and that's where you can ask questions. Sometimes they get backed up. Right now they're backed up. I got about 35 or 40 questions in my queue that I haven't got to. So, um, you know, this is these are some things that, you know, I really do want to help the community out. And I want you to all be successful. I love when Benjamin comes on here and the capitalist comes on here and they're killing it because I know that I've been a part of their life and I know that I've been a part of their success and that makes me happy. And I think you can do the same thing, Scott. Um, I've watched some of your videos and that's exactly what you need to do. And I think you can help um, um, people, other people out and, and talk into their lives. And I think that's at the end of the day, that is something that is a good thing to do. So again, I'll see you all on Sunday. I have videos coming out. Um, I think my next videos talks about a bird nest. So if you want to know what to do with bird nest, make sure you check. It'll either be um, Friday or Monday. The question is, do you knock the bird nest down or do you leave the bird nest there? You'll see that in that next video. Make sure you watch it.